Okay. Okay. Um, hi all, uh, welcome to the Cube Talk, uh, our video for all the Kubernetes um, uh, issues and you know just this uh, video chat. Um, and I'm Rotem, I'm the director of engineering uh, from Armo. And my passion is just, you know, uh, Kubernetes, DevOps, coding, and baking, actually. Uh, also basketball, but we'll talk about it like in a different uh, video chat, not that one. Um, I'll upload those kinds of uh, video like every week. Um, and I'll have here with me a variety of guests uh, from all around the Kubernetes community. And if you have any comments or uh, ideas, uh, suggestions, just, you know, ping me right here. And today's topic uh, will be digital engineering and how DevOps uh, fits into the big picture. And my guest for today here is Larry Gordon, Managing Director at Amtech. Uh, hi, Larry. How are you doing hi. today? I'm doing great, Rodan. Great to see you. Great. So tell us a bit about uh, what you're doing today at Amtech and your current job. Sure, sure. So we do digital product engineering. That means we build platforms that make money for our customers. So for example, Zillow is a customer, right? We built the Zillow, help them build the platform and we deploy it and we do DevOps on it. And, um, you know, there's, there's constant upgrades and changes and we work a lot in the logistics business too. So a lot of the big freight companies here in the U S you know, including UPS and, um, you know, a lot of the trucks and boats you see in our ports and on our roads, uh, we are building platforms for them. And these platforms are soup to nuts. And that's the key thing, Rotem. It's, it's an engineering project, um, starting with ideation and making their uh, dream and their product um, come true. And starting with the engineering, the front end, do a lot of Angular and React, um the database then the back end and the ci cd pipelines then we get into the devops which becomes very much part of the continuing process and they want a full solution they want a product that they can rely on a partner for and we do it services and consulting yeah so having said that uh, what actually is like a digital engineering um can you you know drill down sure. and describe it Sure. So it's, first off, it's modern. It's something that's built with technologies that, are, that have arrived in the past four or five years. And the key thing about a digital product that's different than application development in the past is that it's customer facing and it's revenue generating. So the customers want to get this new product out into the marketplace as quickly as possible, as stably as possible, as securely as possible, uh, and have it start producing revenue and profits because they've budgeted for it and they've made promises to investors and clients that this is something that's going to be solid in a certain time frame. And it's always cloud-based nowadays. Sometimes there's legacy data integration, but cloud-based, scalable, and um, you take. The, the engineering team takes full accountability for the success of the product. Um, and it's also done in small teams. I think very much the, the days of 2000 person application development teams, they still exist because there's legacy products, but yeah. a lot of really cool products can be delivered quickly with teams of under a hundred people. It might be a pod of five or 10, or it might be a few pods. But that's where we see it going, which is an interesting, you know, aspect to the IT services business. It's much more um, highly communicative between the engineering teams and the product owners and management, the people who are funding it. And it's uh, the velocity is really high in terms of daily scrums and daily demos and weekly demos and showing progress on a fast basis from small teams. 
Yeah, well, um, I, we can see it like all over now where, you know, our, our surrounding is going to sprints, uh, fast trains, fast deliveries. Um, and how do you see the DevOps role um, in this uh, quick environment that you're describing? So we deliver DevOps and DevOps capabilities with every product we deliver. And it's tough to split the DevOps teams and the dev teams because we try to do DevOps the right way where the operators, the DevOps engineers uh, do coding and do fixes and contribute to source code, not in a major way like the application developers do and the product engineers do, but they are an integral part of the team. So if we deliver pods and teams, they include high capability DevOps operators and engineers, as well as the software engineers who are more on the functionality side and the capability side. So everything comes with DevOps. And then applications these days, of course, are always being improved and added to. But the DevOps in my world sort of looks like a managed service because it's always happening. It's 24 by seven. You have a retail application. You can't have it go down, particularly this is a Thanksgiving week in the United States. You can't have it go down. It's a big portion of your profits, a big portion of your sales. Um, you know, not everything's, you know, business to consumer. There's a lot of business to business now where yeah. we might have a DevOps group working to maintain the stability and uptime on a application where the application is just um, meant for 250 freight forwarders or freight brokers or logistics companies. But they need to know where their product is as soon as they need to know and be able to you know, report that. So reporting and business intelligence is a, an important part of what the DevOps engineers deliver now. And of course, you know, 24 seven monitoring to make sure things are up and running and you know, using cloud compute resources efficiently. Yeah, so you talk about all the managed cloud, um, like you with the retailers, they're using the managed cloud. I know there are many retailers that want to use like on-prem uh, environments and, and, and how is it going with that? Like how do they uh, go into the managed cloud, um, you know, interfaces like the Amazon or the, or the Google? So it's a lot of work for them. And, you know, basically it comes down to if you're a legacy retailer, not a, you know, cloud native, you know, new, you know, digital retailer. But if you're a legacy le retailer, like a Tiffany or a Chanel, or yeah. um, you're putting a lot of automation into your uh, catalogs and into, you know, what you're selling. And um, they have legacy systems. So, you know, Red Hat and, you know, now the IBM suite, um, Kubernetes, the Red Hat version of Kubernetes. Kubernetes and you know, Jenkins, Docker. It's actually a bigger lift to help get that legacy data and those legacy functions over to the cloud than it is building cloud native. But that's where their data is and that's where a lot, a lot of their application logic is. So they don't want to discard it. So that becomes a very sophisticated project when you're talking legacy and cloud mixed hybrid environments. And in terms of legacy and hybrid environments, you know, a lot of it is sort of the old data centers and the old on-prem, you know, the banks are very, this is very important to the banks, but it also includes Oracle and Salesforce for legacy cloud. And that data needs to be accessible to the new applications as well. So it's a big data uh, integration opportunity, big you know, data integration engineering lift. And, and how, and how, you know, how are you managing it? Like, um, if this retailer wants to go, you know, I want to go into cloud native, Kubernetes, um, how can, you know, how can they uh, enter to this, uh, to this world? Sounds a major issue, like a big deal of uh, doing it. Well, there's, there's good tools out there now. The, the tool chain in the DevOps world is, is quite extensive and very powerful. Um, and so that's, you're not going to find one engineer, you know, you can't scale, right? right. It, you know, who understands the legacy world and understands the new cloud native world, particularly Azure and AWS. Mm -hmm. So, so don't, don't ask for that. 
Um, but that's why they come in pods where there's some legacy, um, more, some engineers more skilled in legacy um, architectures. And then the, the people who are skilled in the more modern architectures and the cloud native architectures. And they work together as a team, moving data, um, you know, designing APIs, um, building a system that works end to end. But you have to have multiple people working together. You can't have the old legacy crowd throwing things over the wall to the new guys and say, here, you deal with it. it, it you have to have an integrated pod. That's why they come in pods of 10. The engineers come in pods of 10. Yeah, and, and what is their main uh, motivations uh, that you can hear you know, from your uh, customers to of moving uh, through this uh, cloud native. It's again, it's a major transformation uh, going there. So what is their, you know, their motivation of, of doing such a roadmap? I think there's several motivations. One is everybody's doing it. We have to do it too, um, you know, which is very high level, but I get it. There's, um, a lot of it is driven by front end considerations. So if you want your application to look modern, you have to use React or Angular or some of the Microsoft suite. So if they, if they want their application to look modern, all of a sudden they're finding it easier to modernize it, doing it using the cloud. Then there's um, scalability issues. The cost issue, it's a little bit, you know, by, you know, by usage, right? So it's not necessarily less expensive, but it's more quickly scalable and it's more quickly monitorable. And um, once you go to containerization, you can actually do some security things that are more interesting and more um, powerful as well. And then there's um, the aspect of, um, of, of kind of reuse, right? So they want to reuse, reuse code that they've built on numerous platforms. So cloud architectures make that a little easier because you can reuse containers. Yeah. Um, well, thanks a lot, Larry, for that. Um, and we're asking our guests like for the final question is, um, if you have any highlight of your week or any article or tool or maybe influencer that you can recommend our audience of, uh, you know, getting in touch with. Okay. Um, so we just did a terrific podcast, uh, terrific um, webinar with DZone, which is popular in the, you know, the DevOps crowd. And I'm on the, on the core team there. So we did a webinar. You can get it at mtech.digital or you can find it at DZone. And it's um, uh, outsourcing product engineering uh, in 2022, how to do it, what to look for, all the advantages. So it's a 45 minute webinar. So it goes into depth of some of the things I just touched on here. Um, that webinar and associated materials are um, a good way in 45 minutes to get up to speed on what we're doing in digital product engineering. Great. So I'll look for it. Uh, I'll take that uh, as my homework here um, and check that out. And I want to thank you again, Larry, for joining me today. And for all you all, I'll meet you in the next Cube Talk session. Um, bye, everyone. Bye. Great to be here on Cube Talk with you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.